Let's get into the weekly stock market talk for November 27th, 2022. Looking at the S&P index seasonality, what we're looking for historically is for November to end off on a high note. However, we're not currently seeing that. This, this month will be over this week. And we just want to kind of observe on a monthly candle, do we close red or do we close green in relationship to how we closed out on October? So did we close out this month higher than we closed out the month of October? And that's what we want to look for on a monthly candle because historically we close out November higher than we closed out October. However, currently at this time, it looks like we may not experience that. Looking at the U.S. economic calendar, starting on Monday, we're going to get some Fed presidents based on their region to be speaking. People are going to be picking up on what they're talking about. I want to get the Consumer Confidence Index on Tuesday. We're going to get Jerome Powell speaking at 1.30 p.m. on the Brookings Institution. The Beige Book comes out on 2 p.m. We're going to get the Chicago PMI early that morning. What I'm also looking for is PCE. So December 1st, Thursday, we're going to get PCE. Same scenario. If it comes out weaker than expected, the market may decide to run based on that. Now, what's going to be, what could impact the market's response to it is the fact that Jerome Powell is going to speak the day ahead of that. And what he may try to do in this particular presentation, and we, we don't know, is he may try to frame a narrative based on PCE data coming out weaker than expected. You know, to get people to understand that even though if the data comes out weaker than expected, it doesn't mean that, you know, we're going to reverse policy anytime soon. And so we just really want to understand how he's going to try to frame the narrative or he may not even speak to this PCE print coming out the next day. Now, in my opinion, and I was going to talk about this earlier on another video, but I'll just go ahead and kind of touch it now. He may already know what this PCE number is, and I think he does. I think by Wednesday, he already is going to know what the PCE number is going to be on Thursday. I don't think he's like us waiting for it to come out to figure out what it is. Therefore, he may create his narrative based around what he already knows the PCE data to be. You understand me? However, what I don't want people to buy into is that, let's say the PCE data comes out weaker than expected or right at expectations. It means that all of a sudden that, you know, they're going to reverse policy. But once again, there's a media that has to create narratives and has to create stories around this issue because that's how they make money. It doesn't have anything to do with what the actual uh, issue is, is that they are tasked with creating so many pieces of content per day as part of a media apparatus. YouTube or some of them got to do the same thing. Some people live off YouTube. They got to create five or six videos every day. Therefore, they have to create a story around these issues to justify their existence in the space. It doesn't mean that things are going to change just because the data print may come out at expectations or lower. If it comes out higher than expectations, then we know that that's going to help create a narrative for them to continue to raise rates. But that's what I want to get you to kind of look for. Also going to get real consumer spending, real disposable income. And then on Thursday, we're going to get the unemployment rate and the non-farm payrolls. And we're going to look for those to be higher or lower than expectation. Okay. Then on this week, we have earnings. We got some Chinese companies, PDD on, on Monday, a joy after close. Looking at the retailers, Hibbit, City Trends. Uh, looking at Workday, definitely looking at CrowdStrike. Looking at Petco, Hormel Foods, that's a good consumer discretionary brand. Snowflake after earnings on Wednesday, Salesforce, Splunk, Five Below, Victoria's Secret, Box, Thursday, Dollar General, Definitely their earnings is going to be really interesting. Same thing with Kroger, same thing with Big Lot. So those retail brands, their earnings are going to be very interesting because they're going to still give us an insight on how the consumer is dealing with the inflation. Lands in another retailer. Then we have Ulta Beauty, UPath, and Asana. Then on Friday, we have Cracker Bear, which is like, a, if, I don't know if those are in your area, they're like a restaurant. It's going to be interesting to find out whether or not people are still eating out in that type of restaurant scenario because it's a sit down restaurant in this environment. Now, going into the charts, right? We're looking at the QQQ. What I just want to continue to show is that we sold down very aggressively uh, off this open at 320, 329, but it closed at 322. I'm going to call it around 325. This is on the weekly candle, right? So this is the one year weekly candle. 
we've recovered somewhat, but to me, from this 325 all the way down to the support, to me, this is all a supply zone. And I'm looking for selling all up and down this zone, right? So I have these boxes as resistance levels, but to me, from this 325 to 330 top, all the way down, to me, we can experience selling on the weekly candle. Let's go to the one year on the daily. Let me zoom out. And to me, you're going to see the same thing. Once we get around here, well, I still have a 325, but 325 to 330. In my opinion, you can experience selling all the way down until we hit the support level. Now, can you trade in this range? Yes. But to me, we experienced so much selling in this range right here. And we saw we, we hit here. We bounced it. We came back down. We hit it again. We bounced up somewhat, but we still haven't moved back aggressively back towards that 325. And that's something I want to look for. So to me, this week can be a, a catalyst to either move us closer to the 325, but we still haven't got over it. So let's say we we close that 286. Let's say over the next week, let's say the next two days, we get to like 305. People are going to be yelling and screaming. It's very bullish. But what we see here is what do we do. We open that 308, we close that 310, and then we saw it all the way back down. And to me, so there's a, to me a lot of bull traps, or some people call them bear traps. But to me, there's a lot of traps for bullishness in this, I would say, 265 to 260 range, all the way up to 325, where you can get a lot of trading volatility. You can get caught on the wrong side of the trade because you think that we're in an upturn. But what we've seen is that we've sold down from 325 or 330 really aggressively. And we've just been trading in a range between maybe 260 and 300 the past few weeks or the past few days. Let's go to the SPY and we're going to see pretty much the same thing on the SPY chart. So at around this 422 to let's say, four, um, say 420 to 425, we sold down very aggressively all the way down to the 357. This is on the weekly candle. We moved back up, but we have not regained back to this previous point before. Right. So what do we see? We saw 450 sell all the way down to what is this? What number is this? Let's say 357. Let's say 360. Move back up to 425. Sold all the way back down again. And then we haven't regained the 425. This is on the weekly candles. Go into the one year on the daily. Let me zoom back out. Same scenario. Right. Really hard sell off here. We gain this. Chart looks almost similar to the QQQ. Hit the 410, sold all the way back down to, let's say, the 360, and then we haven't gotten back. So to me, around here is where there's some resistance. I want to see that we regain it, but I know that we sold off very aggressively on this 410 close. So this is a bullish day. We sold off really aggressively on the 410 close. So if we move up, what do we close at? We close at 402. If we move back up over the next week, I need to see that we sell off again around 410. If we don't, do we sell off again around, let's say, 419, 420? Then the same thing for like maybe 425 to 430. Because what do we see all in this range? Just a lot of selling. And what is going to be the narrative that's going to make people want to push this back up over that 425 mark? So from here to here, right, so from 360 to 425, we can just trade in this range the next, to the end of the year. And you'll see a lot of volatility, a lot of people getting caught on the wrong side of the trade because they think we're bullish or we're bearish now. But until we go under this support here, or we start to move over this 425, I'm not really, um, how do I say, confident of a direction in the market, right? Now, here's a story that I want people to pay attention to. There's a lot of protests in China over COVID restrictions, at least that's what the information that we're getting. What I want people to ask themselves is that how does they think that's going to impact China, China's economy? Now, a lot of people have told you that China's economy is going to implode. It hasn't happened yet. That's not what I mean. What I mean is that is there a trade based on how you think it's going to impact China's economy? Not the economy is going to implode. OK, cool. Where's the trade at in that? Right. How do we think that this can impact their economy? Because a lot of American businesses have relationships in China. And then therefore, if this these protests start to become more widespread and impacts their economy, it can Im impact these U.S. businesses who have a lot of business activity in these particular areas. Every other story to me is not really relevant to what I'm trying to do. 
Okay, because I can't solve problems in China. In fact, the Chinese will not even let you. They won't even accept your help in their country. Therefore, there's nothing I can do about what's going on in China. Okay, the Chinese will not even accept your help. And that's what you want to understand. You're going to get a lot of media attention to this situation. But my question is, how does it impact U.S. corporations that have business dealings in China? Because I'm looking for a trade. I can't do anything about anything else because once again, I repeat myself. The Chinese government will not even accept your help, right? They want to handle their own situations internally. So whatever's going on over there, they're going to have to work that out. Hope you got some value from it. David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. Hit me up in the comments. Talk to you later.